Great. Um, hello there. Uh, today we'll be showing you how to perform a flexible uh, nasal endoscopy. Um, this is a, a procedure really used as an extension of your examination when you're assessing so someone in an ENT clinic or an acute setting um, to see how their larynx, uh, i.e. the vocal cords, look like and uh, um, hopefully we can teach you to make it a little bit easier for yourself and for the patient by a few tips. And um, then we've got a um, stack here which um, as we do the procedure on Dr Ringrose you can have a look at the different structures and what to look out for. Um, so obviously it's always important to uh, introduce yourself which I'm sure you always do. Um, it's important to adhere to your local protocol um, as this is an aerosol genitaling procedure and uh, currently we're operating during a pandemic time so uh, it's important to know what the local policy is when you're performing uh, this, this uh, procedure in some way safe for yourself and, and, and for the patient. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, introduce myself. Um, hi Dr Rigos, uh, my name is Aria, one of the ENT doctors. Uh, thanks very much for coming. Um, what we're going to, to do today is we would like to have a look at your vocal port or that's your voice box which yep. generates sound and also acts as a gateway to, to your airway really, your airpipe. So um, just to find out a little bit more uh, why you've been suffering with symptoms that uh, you, you have. Yep. Would that be alright with that's you? That's fine. Yeah. Great. Uh, have you ever had this procedure before? I've not before, no. Great. Um, I'm going to take you step by step through what we're doing. If you have any questions at any point, please do ask me and uh, we'll, do, we'll yep. take it further. Great. Um, so broadly, we are going to use this um, uh, camera here. Um, it's, um, it looks a little bit long, but that's just to make it uh, mm. easier for me to use. Um, um, I'm going to use uh, not very much of this uh, camera at all. Um, it's a fiber optic uh, camera, and it's got a, a light source yep. uh, hit, so it just allows me uh, for me to have a look at the uh, um, TV there, so we can see uh, what is going on with your port cords. Would that be all right with that's you? Fine, yeah. Fantastic. Um, uh, in every patient when you're performing a, a, a flexible nasal endoscopy, uh, you should always discuss or ask them whether they would like to uh, have the local anaesthetic. Um, we tend to use the combination of phenylephrine and uh, lidocaine. And uh, the two aspects of uh, this is, uh, first of all, uh, with your local anaesthetic, making the procedure a little bit easier for the patient, uh, and more tolerable. Um, and also it's got some phenylephrine which uh, essentially acts as a decongestant. So it makes the first part of the procedure, which is going through the nose, a little bit easier for the patient. So the tissue are um, slightly reduced in size and not the dentist. Um, so, do you have any allergies to anything, sir? Not that I know Great. of. Right. Um, so I'm just going to use this solution. I'm afraid it doesn't taste very nice. Yep. Um, if you swallow it, that's okay. If you want to spit it out, that's fine as well. That's fine, uh, we can yep. provide you with some fish in and, and a bit of policy so you can sure, do that. Sure, yeah. Jolly good. Um, uh, how are you breathing through your nose? Do you have any uh, difficulty breathing through one side or the Sometimes other? Sometimes a bit blocked on the right side. On the right. Is it blocked today? Feels okay today. Great, fine. And can you take a nice deep breath through your nose? That's all nice and open. Good. Feels okay. Right. Yeah. So I'm just going to spray this uh, solution into your nose, and forgive me that it doesn't taste very nice. Yeah, yeah, uh, sure. I'm just making sure that this procedure uh, is easier for you. Yeah. Right. So what I usually do, I place my hands on a patient's head and uh, lift the tip of the nose, so you can see the um, entry to the nose on each side, and then you can just uh, spray some of the solution. The both sides. Great, thank you very much, Dr. Rose. If you just do a little bit of sniff, I've got a bit of uh, cup of tissue suit for you if you need to use it. Fantastic. Um, this, um, as we're looking inside your nose, it shouldn't be uncomfortable. If it is mm. uncomfortable at any time, you just put your hands up and I'll stop. Yeah, okay? sure. Jolly good. Right. And what I would like you to do is to keep your neck still. Mm. Um, and look straight ahead mm. and bring your head down a little bit. Great. And you can uh, look, at you look at the screen and see, uh, see the, uh, the images. Right. Nice deep breaths in. Um, and the more you breathe through your nose, the easier mm. job is for me to have a look because uh, the air allows me to go in a little bit easier. Mm. Right. 
Yeah. Um, first of all, if you stick your tongue out, I'm going to warm up the tip of my scope so it doesn't steam too much as we look inside. That's great, thank you. Lovely. And if you take a nice deep breath in, we'll just have a look. And then again, don't forget to ask me to stop if uh, I'm causing discomfort. Okay, right. So I'm looking from the right side. As you can see at the top of the picture, you've got the inferior turbinate. Uh, to the right of the picture is the septum, and the left side, you've got the lateral aspect of the nose. What I'm trying to do is just to do uh, go through this gap here without touching any tissue because it's going to be uncomfortable for Dr. Ringrose and gently pass it through and sticking to the floor of the nose without touching it and as you can see I'm not touching the scope at all at this point I'm just going straight back this is the post -nas uh, nasal space here and what I'm doing now I'm just rotating my camera without touching anything and we're trying to take a look at the uh, Rosenmuller fossa, which is uh, further up, so it's top left of the picture, um, and also the opening of the station tube on the right. So once we've done that, now I'm going to start to gently look down. So nice deep breath in, Dr. Renaud. We're just going to go slightly in again. If it's uncomfortable, you let me know and we'll stop. So our view starts to change a little bit. So what you can see here at the bottom of the picture, this is the tongue base and the follicular, and that is the epiglottis. Um, this is the middle of the picture, as you can see this cartilaginous structure, and uh, it's just like in the middle of the picture for me here. So as you can see, the vocal cords are moving there, and just to orientate ourselves, bottom of the picture is anterior to the patient. So what that means is that this picture is now laterally inverted, so the right of the picture is left of the patient, and the left of the screen is right of the patient. All right, nice deep breath. Great. All right, so as you can see, the vocal cords are moving. Can you bring your jaw forward, Tom? So, do you see? It kind of easily opens the uh, um, supraglottis, it gives you better view of the remoglottis. So the gap between the two vocal cords are called remoglottis, and uh, that's your uh, rest of the airway there. Um, and the bottom of the picture, that's your anterior commissure, so as you see it looks like a triangle, the head of the triangle is just the bottom of the epiglottis there. And the retinoids, they are at the top of the picture. The two blob, blobby things that you can see, those are the corniform and corniculate uh, cartilages. And there is a structure that runs between the um, retinoids and the epiglottis, and that's the area of epiglottic folds. All right. So, can you say E? So as you see, we are now testing adduction. The cords are coming together quite nicely. Can you cough, Tom? <coughs> Great. And can you say, hey, hey, hey? Hey, hey, hey. Great. And can you count one to five? One, two, three, four, five. Wonderful. Can you stick your tongue out? So we're going to try to get a view, better view of the tongue base and see whether we can see anything here. So as you can see on the left side, here that looks like a retention cyst. These are the tonsils, so that's the left tonsil. This is the right tonsil just under here. Alright, nice deep breath in again. That's it. Brilliant. And you can always refocus and adjust how far you can go down. I'm not going to touch any tissues there because um, it will stimulate cough reflex and we don't want to do that. Um, Tom, if you rotate your neck to your left all the way, and as you can see, we are opening up the right hand sides, and there's two channels here called the pyriform of fossae where food goes down, it channels down, and these are the areas that sometimes you can get new plastic uh, changes. And if you look the other side, so it's quite important to check both sides when you're testing someone. Alright, so I'm just going to 
go down and try not to touch things too much and to get the view off that. So, down a little bit, try to make the tonsil. And neck back in the middle. That's well done, Tom. That's great. Alright. So, and when you assess someone's larynx, or the essentially supraglottis, glottis and subglottis and you're interested in two things function which we just tested and anatomy so you look at structure to see whether you can see any abnormal features we go put a little bit down and i think we can stop the tongue doctor windows i'm sure it's not very comfortable great on the either side of those white bands which is the true vocal cords we've got the false cords again we usually look for abnormal um, growth uh, abnormal changes, the vocal uh, cord nodules that are usually present anterior two thirds, and knowing the anterior is that to the bottom of the picture. Uh, and uh, things like infection causes pus around this area, so that's something that you might need to have a look in research if someone has got stridal, uh, if the cords are not moving, um, and whether there's a big old tumour in the way and that's usually, that might sometimes be the problem. Alright, and now I'm going to gently withdraw, so we have completed this examination, we saw what we wanted to see. can also turn around a little bit and look on the right side, look at the Rosenmuller fossa and also looking at the station tube and then we're gently going to come back and as I withdraw, I continue to look at the nose, make sure I'm not damaging anything. Great. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. No Rose. Are you, you all right? I'm fine, yes. Brilliant. Um, I'm just going to put my equipment down and then just discuss with you what we saw and yep. what we ought to do. All right. Do you have any questions for me? Nothing at the moment. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll hope that was a little bit useful. And you find some tips that might help you in your clinical practice. Uh, thanks very much.